Welcome to this Giftworks video. My name is Steve Faithful, and this is the sixth of an eight-part video series talking about how easy it is to import information into Giftworks. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the more advanced options that are available to you from within the mapping section of the Giftworks import process. To get started, you'll notice on my screen I'm, I'm, at an, I'm doing an import, and I have a number of my fields already mapped. And in the previous video, in video five of the series, I showed you just some of the basics around mapping some of these fields, but we move on to some of the fields that I didn't address in that video that I want to address in this and that it will show you some of the more advanced options. The first thing I want to talk about is a group. And for many of you, you probably have group designations somewhere in your import source file, whether that be your Excel file or your text file or your Access database. And generally speaking, especially when it comes to Excel or a text file, you probably chose one of two methods to, to designate that a donor is part of a group. You'll notice that, uh, looking at my screen right now, you'll notice that I have three columns in my Excel file. I have a sponsor column, I have a volunteer column, and I have a group name column. Now, these three columns are all used to designate that a donor is part of a group. The first two columns, sponsor and volunteer, use one method to determine or to designate whether a donor is part of a group. So the sponsor column uses a method in which the column name is used as the name of the group. So for instance, this column is named sponsor because it's the sponsor group. And then I designate that a donor is part of this group by doing by providing some marking inside of the cell or inside of the data that corresponds to this donor. Uh, in this case, I'm using an X to mark that this donor is part of the sponsor group. Uh, you may use an X or a, a Y or a yes or a T or a true, some positive indication that this, don that this donor is part of this group. Uh, this volunteer column, this next column, uses the exact same method. So the column name is the name of my group. So this is my volunteer group, and I'm using an X. Now, you'll notice if I hit this, uh, the arrows down at the bottom, if I click the arrow, you'll notice that um, this next donor that's in my, uh, that's in my import, uh, this one is Dave, Dave does not have an X next to sponsor, but it does have an X next to volunteer. So that means that Dave is not part of the sponsor group, but is part of the volunteer group. In your import, you may have chosen to use this methodology to indicate that a donor is part of a group. So once again, I use the column name as the group name, and I use some marker to indicate that the donor is part of that group. Now this third column, this column called group name, uses a different method, and instead of naming the column the name of the group, and then using a marker to indicate that the donor is part of that group, I simply, instead of, um, instead of naming the group as part of the column name, I simply put the group name inside of the, con the, the cell contents themselves or the data themselves. So in this case, this d donor Dave is part of the setup team. If I use the arrow, you'll notice that Steve, uh, this other donor Steve, is part of the board member group. And so these use two different methodologies. One uses the column name as the group name, and this other one uses, puts the column name right inside of the data itself. And so it'll, it will be good for you to identify which method you use. Some of you may use both methods. If you use both methods, you can still accommodate that. And let me show you how, within this mapping process, that you can accommodate this. The first thing is you want, we want to handle mapping this sponsor group. So I'm going to click on this uh, link right here. And I'm going to come down to the Groups option, and I'm going to choose this option. Let me move the video over, over a little bit. I'm going to choose this Groups option that says Create a New Group. And what I'm going to be given is a, a dialog a screen that gives me two options. And these two options correlate to the two things that I just explained to you. The first one, this first one talks about creating a group using the column name. Um, if that's the option that I'm choosing, which in this case for the sponsor group, the sponsor group is the sponsor is the name of my group, and so I'm going to click on this top option which says create a group using the column name. You'll notice that it detected that sponsor is the name of my group, and I can provide a group description if I want. And once I click done, now I've successfully mapped that sponsor group uh, column. I'm going to I'm going to do volunteer the exact same way. I'm going to come down to groups, create a new group, and I'm going to choose the top option as well because that's using the same method as the sponsor group. Once I do that, I see that it detected volunteer, and I'm going to say that's description. I don't have to provide a description if I don't want. I was just doing that for the sake of illustration, but I'm, I've mapped these two. Now I come to my third one, this group name column, which if you remember, group name is not the name of my group. The, the name of the group is actually contained within the data itself. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, 
move my video down a little bit. Click on this and come down to groups and say create a new group, but instead of the top option, I'm going to use the bottom option which says create a group using information in the column rather than the column name itself. And so once I click on that, it's going to detect detect the two groups that are contained within that column, the board member and the setup team group. Um, once I do that, I can provide a description once again, and then I can click the Done button. Once I do that, I then successfully um, mapped my groups, the first two using one method, the second one using the next method. The next thing I want to show you is this My ID column. This My ID column in this case is a field, let's just pretend that as part of my Excel file, this, this column, this ID represents a unique identifier that came from my old system. Perhaps I was using an old donor management system and I have this ID that I want to bring into Giftworks. Now in going through all the categories of fields that I can choose from, there was no place that I could really choose from. There's no built-in Giftworks fields that can accommodate this. And so what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to use a custom field. Let me move the video down a little bit. And once I click on my ID, I can come down to this custom fields option. And I can choose to add a new, add a new custom field. Let me move this over just a little bit more. Uh, under custom field, I can add a new custom field here. Now, custom fields, if you're familiar with Giftworks, custom fields are fields that you can define. You can create them however you want. And they can store the kind of information you want th them to store. Um, you can create a new custom field as part of the import process. Um, so I could just click on uh, add a new custom field right here and go through the process of creating a custom field, um, which if you need more information on how to do this, it's available certainly in the Giftworks help. Um, but I can either choose to create one as part of the import process, or if I've perhaps already been to the settings area of Giftworks and created one, which you can do as part of the, uh, within the settings area, then I can simply come back and um, under custom fields, choose the custom field that I already created. In this case, I had created previously created a field called my old system ID which I wanted to store this information, and so I can simply choose that. Now, custom fields are, um, are good because they can hold data that may not fit anywhere else in Giftworks, and you can customize them to be how you want them to be. Um, one of the things that, uh, that is helpful if you're using Giftworks standard, uh, you will have access to 12 different kinds of custom fields. I'm sorry, 12 total custom fields of four different kinds. And so that, that th those 12 custom fields can be helpful, especially as part of the import process where you may discover that you have fields that you need to uh, import that you don't really have a place to go. And as part of the import process, you may also realize that you're running out of custom fields. You may realize that 12 just doesn't provide enough. And uh, as part of the import process, you may realize I need more. And so that might point you to uh, maybe to look into uh, getting Giftworks Premium, which provides you up to 55 fields. And I wanted to point that out in the event that you're mapping these and realize that you've run out of custom fields. This next field that I want to show you is called this whole name field. This whole name field um, is a name instead of, if you'll notice at the top of my import, I have the first, middle, and last broken out. But for some of you, you may not have these individual name pieces broken out. You may have just one field that contains the entire name, and yet you still want to import this information. And one of the things you can do, let me move this video down a little bit, you can go ahead and click on the click on the link and go down to special options and we provide something we call the name tool this name tool uh, provides you the ability to then go ahead and once I click on it it's gonna bring up a screen and this screen will um, show me the names that I have in my fields but it will allow me to break apart this name into the individual elements of the name so I simply choose a format at the top that best represents the data that's contained in my field so in this case I have Steve C, Stephen C. Faithful and so I pick a format like John L. Doe that represents um, the data that's in my column, how I formatted my names. Once I do that, Giftworks is going to go ahead and show you how it's going to break apart the name. So it breaks apart the prefix appropriately in the first, middle, and last name. It will detect a suffix if necessary, and it will even take a, a guess at the gender. If there happened to be a name like Steve and Vicky Faithful, it would actually pull apart Steve and Vicky as well. And then if it detected that it wasn't a person's name but an organization name, it would pull that out as well. Once I'm satisfied, and I can use these arrows go to go to navigate back and forth through my data to determine if this is the uh, if this if it's breaking apart the names appropriately. Once I do that, I can click on the next button, and I can then choose the fields that I want to actually import into Giftworks. I don't have to choose. I don't have to import all the fields that it detects. So if I don't feel comfortable taking a guess at the gender, I can just skip that. Or um, I don't have to import the prefix if I don't want to. Or I can just skip the middle name. Or you can choose to import all the information into Giftworks. So if you have a situation in which your name uh, is uh, contained in a single field, you may want to go ahead and use the name tool. 
So as part of the mapping process where you're assigning your fields to import fields within GIFWorks, I've shown you some of the more advanced um, mapping options that you can use. For instance, groups, we talked about custom fields, and then we talked about the whole name field. There are some other fields that you can import that, uh, that may be slightly more advanced, and you can read more about those in the GIFWorks import guide um, at our, at the, uh, using the link in the help area. And then there's also information uh, within the um, help itself. So you can feel free to consult that, look at that. I trust that this information has been will be helpful to you as you look to import your information into GIFWorks. And I uh, thank you for watching this video.